Halo is a series that's been around for as long as Xbox has. These games are as synonymous with Microsoft as things like Windows or trying to double the price of Xbox Live are. Halo Combat Evolved, or otherwise known as Halo 1, is one of the first big FPS games to be on console. The game was remastered once in 2011 with the Halo CE Anniversary Edition. This game of course was also included in the Master Chief Collection for the Xbox One, which was later ported over to PC. Today, I'll be doing something that a lovely viewer suggested, and that is trying to beat Halo CE by only punching. Now, on the surface that doesn't sound too bad, right? After all, the majority of the time when I play Halo, I throw a grenade, shoot, 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 then go in with a melee to finish him off. Well, Halo C is a different beast compared to the more popular Halo 2 and 3. For starters, and what will probably make this run more difficult than it needs to be, this game has a health bar. Yep, instead of your health regenerating when you just sit in cover for a little bit, you actually have to go find health packs to heal yourself. If you take too much punishment, that is. Now, take out the ability to shoot, and now you're taking all sorts of damage as you run up to bash your enemies in the face. Also. I've done two Can You Beat challenges for Halo 3, and to be honest, I feel like the enemies are much, much stronger in this game, albeit the other games have better AI. Anyway, I'm playing the game on normal difficulty because playing on easy makes me feel like less of an epic gamer. Also, I want to make sure I can get that sweet dose of pain my doctors won't prescribe to me no matter how much I ask. Getting things underway with the Pillar of Autumn, we find ourselves stuck in a tutorial. Ah man, it's so odd to think that back then, you really kinda needed one of these because console shooters really weren't the norm. After we run around doing nothing, we make our way to the bridge where we can finally start dishing out a whooping on these enemies. Unfortunately, you do have to have a gun to melee. Since this level is the first level, there really isn't that much to note. I tried to see if any weapons melee any harder than the others, but it turns out every weapon does the same damage and has about the same melee time. In the first few levels you will see me carrying different weapons to test this out. From what I can gather, most grunts take about 1 to 2 melees to kill. Elites can take 4 or more, not to mention they hit hard and move around a lot. And jackals also take 1 to 2, and of course, the classic Halo move of one-hit melees to the back will help me out a lot here. The basic gist of this level, for those who don't know, is the Covenant are invading the Pillar of Autumn because they want to clap your cyborg cheeks. You wake up, fight some baddies, and find an escape pod. Like every one of these challenges I do, I always end up thinking, hey, this ain't so bad after the first level. Which, I mean, duh, it's the first level. Come on, bro. Moving on to Halo, which is the name of the second level, I'm really reminded at how much I love this game. Basically every level is a banger in some way, shape, or form. So thank you so much for having me play it again, but also, I don't like you very much for having me do this challenge. Anyway, our escape pod landed and we need to find a way to put together some sort of resistance to get back at the Covenant for destroying our spaceship. You know, they destroyed your spaceship like your older brother used to destroy your Lego creations, so you smashed his girlfriend. We run around in this mission with a warthog to try and find survivors. I always tried to save as many of the marines as I could because I felt like I got some sort of Halo good boy points for doing so. I don't know man, I was a really weird kid. This mission didn't give me too much trouble. There were a couple spots where I died, but I expected to get my cheeks clapped a few times. I decided that splatter kills were okay as that is essentially the car version of a melee. Hashtag 1000 IQ plays here boys. With the marines rescued, sorta, this mission was in the bag and we were on to the third round of this heavyweight fight. The third mission in this masterpiece is Truth and Reconciliation. This mission is a standout banger on the list of bangers that is Halo CE. When you can use the weapons that is. Man this mission was a pain in the butt all the way through. The first part is simple enough. You and a squad of soldiers make your way to a Covenant ship and find a way inside to save Captain Keys. Normally, you're equipped with a sniper rifle, which it goes without saying is one of the most iconic video game weapons of all time. Well, I just used my fist. This level was pain. It took me so many tries just to do this first part. But after taking a short break and coming back for more, I was able to make it to the Covenant drop zone. You know, I thought the Hunters would have been a huge pain in the butt. However, they really weren't. Maybe it was because I had Marines with me, or maybe they just aren't designed to have a player up in their grill while you give them a smack in the booty, but yeah, they really weren't a problem at all. Which is nice after all the pain I just went through. 
Well, remember how I said the hunters were nice because they weren't as much of a pain in the butt as I thought they would be? Well, if there's one thing about playing a game you haven't played in a while, it's that there's bound to be some surprises. That surprise was the invisible sword guy that comes after your lucky charms as soon as you come aboard. This guy sucked. There's really no sugarcoating it. It took me so, 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 so many tries to kill him. But that smack in the back at a marine's expense was what got me to prevail, baby. Since the sword boy and the area before the ship set the tone for the mission, I knew I was in for a painful time. This mission took me the longest by far, so far anyway. The task was simple, find the captain and get out. I had to solo hunters for the first time, which I thought would be the end of the pain train on this level, but I encountered more sword boys on my journey. Thankfully, I was able to take them out and the guy who was guarding the captain. I also didn't really know that you could open the cells before you kill everyone, but that was a nice touch that really allowed me to beat this section. From here, there's really not much to report. You do have to defend the captain because if he dies, well, it's game over. But compared to the rest of the mission, this part was a cakewalk. I love this mission. I really, really do. But man, this was not a fun way to play it at all. <laughs> okay, so the last mission really rustled my jimmies. The fourth mission, the silent cartographer, is also a banger. Are y'all seeing a trend here? This was one that I didn't have as much of an issue with, especially due to the fact that you can run past all the enemies. <laughs> Lol, yup. You don't need to kill many, if any, baddies to beat this level, which gives me an idea for a future video. Hmm. <laughs> uh, maybe someday. Anyway, this level is all about getting into some underground structures and pressing buttons to find a map to the Halo Ring. It's not a bad time at all, even with the melee only challenge. But when you decide to start running past everything, like how I try to avoid my real life problems, you may have to restart over and over again. But all in all, this mission really wasn't much of an issue, and I still love it. It's one of my favorites, baby. Alright, now, Assault on the Control Room may be the mid-game climax for this game. Uh, on this mission, you go to find the Control Room. I mean, duh, for Halo. This mission is dope sick nasty, and it is without a doubt one of my most played missions ever in the Halo franchise. I just love how the devs use arrows and light to lead you into the next area, especially when it can be confusing. This mission really wasn't much of a problem either, as I could just run past everything. Even the section where they really want you to use the Scorpion can be bypassed by just using the Warthog and going through. And the only trouble area in this whole mission for me was the last part. Normally, you have to deal with the whole slew of bad guys, but this gamer god just ran past them. 343 Guilty Spark is the next mission. This one is arguably the most atmospheric mission in the entire Halo franchise. This mission has us trying to find Captain Keys. Again. The first part is super easy as you're basically just going into the depths of the structure to find anyone. Well, big reveal! You find the Flood which are essentially Halo's version of zombies. As far as the melee only challenge goes, I can forget about trying to melee these boys. They hit hard, jump around real fast, and can even carry guns. On top of that, when I do get in melee range, they are just as strong as elites. Oh man, this isn't looking good. Thankfully, the Flood don't require you to kill them in order to move on to sections of this level. So the biggest challenge I faced while playing this level was trying to find my way out, which thankfully, I did. Oh man, oh man, this level, the library, is probably the most hated level in the entire Halo franchise. You have to deal with this wave after wave of the Flood. Sometimes they even have rocket launchers, which isn't really fun. And not to mention the guys that run after you with shotguns, that's not a blast either. The best way i found to deal with this mission is just running past everything. Thankfully, you can do that here. It feels like you're just making a beeline to every single health pack on the level, but this level took me over 40 minutes to beat, and that was trying to beat it as fast as possible. Oh man, this level is probably my least favorite level in the entire game. I don't hate the Flood, I really don't, but this mission, which was, you know, it does have some good things about it, but it really isn't on the list of things we like to see. 
Thankfully, I was able to beat it, even though I'm not sure I registered a single kill the entire level. Okay, so one thing about Halo is that it likes to reuse assets. I mean, the game is from 2001, so give it a break. But anyway, the next mission is called Two Betrayals, where the guilty spark himself turns on you after you realize that Halo is a weapon that will kill the Flood, yes, but the way it does this is by killing all of its food. Covenant, humans, everything. So, the whole idea of this mission is getting the three pulse generators, which help you in destroying Halo itself. Thankfully, since this is a flood blended level, you can run past all the enemies, meaning I really don't have to smack everyone in the next week if I don't want to. This level wasn't too much of a pain, as I pretty much tried to avoid conflict at all costs. The only real hang up was this area where I kept getting barrel stuffed by a flood with a rocket launcher. Thankfully, I was able to get past this dude. This mission is an excellent one when you play it like you're supposed to. There are so many enemies and so many tough spots to get past, but thankfully, the library had trained me to run past everything like a madman, and even though I did kill a few Covenant, this level was a fairly easy level, albeit a longer one altogether. Now the next level is called Keys. In this level, Cortana transport you to a Covenant ship where the captain is being held, because you never found him after the flood outbreak. This level is another flood and covenant level. The objectives are all based on getting to a certain area, so you don't really have to worry about killing anyone, at least at the moment. So this challenge is still intact for this level. So in the last section, I mentioned that you were in a covenant ship. Well, the way this mission works is that you start in a ship. There's a big hole so you have to jump down because fall damage doesn't apply in cutscenes, and then you find a way back into the ship. Now if you remember back to the third mission of the game where you go into the Covenant ship for the first time, you have to clear the whole area of Covenant forces before you can go in. Well, that's what I was expecting to happen here, but since I had gotten this far in the run by just kind of running like a madman, I decided to give it a go and see if I could just do that. And you know what? It actually worked. Maybe it was due to the Flood killing the Covenant for me, or maybe it was just a time-based thing standing in the beam, but either way, I was super stoked this worked. This is the part of the level where you find Captain Keys. This part took me the longest by far. Since the ship has tighter corridors, it was a little tougher to run past everyone. Don't worry, I made sure to give everyone a nice healthy smack on the way by when they got in my way. Now, I mentioned that for the past few levels, I was able to just run past everything, right? I mean, how many times did I say that? Well, this is an area where that wasn't gonna fly. Now, there's a big reveal here in the campaign where you see that the captain has been infected by the flood. So, you punch his face like any Chad would, and be on your merry way. Well, this area where you find the captain has both Flood and Covenant before them, and guess what? Just like running from your problems comes back to bite you, you know, I had to take out the enemies before the cutscene would trigger. And well, uh, this is a challenge I guess, so I'll have to... Oh snap. <laughs> Here's my reaction while I was playing. That worked out, wow! Yes! The rest of the level is a cakewalk. I just got back to the hangar, which was super duper close, stole a banshee, and we're on the home stretch, boys. Like, look at this, I got into the banshee so quick, I don't know if the game knew what to do. <laughs> okay, so here we are, the last level of the game. This is probably my favorite all time Halo mission. Even better than the last mission on Halo 3, if you ask me. Anyway, this level is pretty easy, all things considered. Instead of just the Flood and Covenant trying to tickle your pickle, you have Sentinels that join the action. And to everyone who knows this mission who is thinking about what I'm thinking about, we'll get to that in a second. Now, my tried and true tactic of running past everything while yelling speedrun and taking shots of G-Fuel, it worked for the most part. There was this area on the bridge where I needed to take out all the dudes in here, and thankfully, after a whole game of taking out some baddies, it wasn't too bad. If anything, it was nice to get back to the roots of the challenge. Now to address the elephant in the room. There's really not all that much that happens before you need to go to the engine room and blow up those ports. So, we get there and I get the objective which says, use a rocket or grenade to blow them up. And well, this part was in the back of my mind throughout the whole game. I tried, and tried, and tried to melee the ports, but I just couldn't find a way. Maybe there's a way you can grenade boost or use a co-op buddy to jump to the area and give it a nice fist to the face, 
but as far as I can tell, you can't beat Halo CE with only punching. And that makes me sad. After finding out that I could punch the generators on two betrayals, I got a little optimistic about this part, but unfortunately, I couldn't find a way. And well, the rest of the way is what everyone knows, the Warthog Run, which is one of the best sequences in all of video games, in my opinion. So even though I couldn't do the objectives with just my fists, you can beat the game with just your fists as far as combat goes. So I ended up using grenades to beat this area. I figured, hey, if I can't complete all the objectives by meleeing, I could at least do it without shooting. Once you get the first vent to pop, that's when all the baddies come to ruin your day. And to be honest, I've always used a rocket launcher for this part, but grenades are definitely the way to go. I mean, it didn't take much time at all, and it was on to the Warthog area. I mean, seriously, usually if you use a rocket launcher, you have to get on the tubes and shoot them, and then jump all the way back up, go through this whole area. So it's so awesome to use the grenades on this, it saves so much time. But anyway, I wanna say thank you very much to Furious Flame for suggesting this challenge. And if you ever wanna suggest a challenge, do it. I mean, of course, if this ever blows up to the point where there's so many people, it'd be hard to keep up, but I'm always up for suggestions, everyone. It was fun, tough, and incredible to play through this amazing game again. So once again, thank you very much for that. And also thank you to everyone who watched the video and continues to support me as my channel grows. Consider subscribing to be a part of that growth and leave a like to let me know you enjoyed the video. As Captain Cringe of the Cringe Club, I hope you all have a great, great, great rest of your day.